So we wanted to take a few minutes to uh, go over some trends we're seeing in the AI space. Uh, obviously, we, uh, AI is a big topic, so we wanted to focus on a few things, particularly compute and data. All right, so let's go over the state of adoption. Uh, earlier this year, we ran a survey, and we found that uh, many companies are uh, beginning to uh, adopt deep learning or expressing interest in adopting deep learning. And in that same survey, we found that the, the main bottleneck was actually lack of skilled people. So this gives you kind of the demand side for uh, AI. So on the supply side for the labor market, we've actually also noticed a uh, growing trend in people interested in learning about AI technologies. So in our own online learning platform, where we have over 2.1 million users, we've seen a huge surge in interest in AI. And there's also a few new topics that are uh, kind of uh, uh, popping up in our radar. So a couple of them we ran tutorials on, PyTorch and reinforcement learning. So a survey of uh, close to 8,000 IT leaders across 84 countries revealed that more and more people, more and more companies are investing in AI and automation technologies. Um, but the level of investment really depends on the kind of company. And one thing we found is that companies that already regard themselves as digital leaders tend to report a much higher level of investment. Uh, but you know, location matters as well, too, um, especially in China, where the business environment can be very competitive more companies report higher rates of investment as well, too. And later today, our closing keynote speaker, Dr. Kai-Fu Lee, will be able to give a detailed uh, uh, overview of what's happening in the Chinese landscape. So we're actually about into year seven of the kind of resurgence and in interest in deep learning. And I remember in 2013, when I first started kind of uh, following deep learning closely, embedding myself in that community, uh, it was a very small group of people. So you had to basically apprentice with a few groups in the world. So a lot of it was based on oral tradition. There was not a lot of documentation, not a lot of tools. Um, but today, there's a lot more uh, democratization happening around deep learning. So we have uh, big data sets that people are sharing. We have improvements in hardware and software tools particularly in uh, open source machine learning libraries. So uh, what are some of these new uh, technologies on the horizon? We often talk about models, but let's take a moment here to talk a little bit more about the latest with uh, data and compute. Uh, one thing to think about is that researchers are always exploring new algorithms. But to do that, you naturally play with different neural network architectures. You play with new features, new parameters, uh, and new optimization techniques. And all of that uh, involves experimentation that can take a very long time, hours, days, and sometimes even weeks. Now, as a researcher, even if you have the patience to uh, wait for these simulations, these experiments to run, um, computation is also very, very expensive. So it's a non, there's a non-trivial cost challenge to uh, innovating in AI as well, too. So again, we're into year seven of uh, this resurgence in interest in, uh, in deep learning. So uh, the way hardware, um, uh, the hardware industry moves is First, you kind of figure out what the important uh, calculations and workload is. Then you figure out, is there enough scale to justify specialized hardware? So at this point, actually, uh, we're seeing more and more new companies uh, affirm that there's enough scale and uh, there's enough kind of uh, compute primitives to build specialized hardware. So it's not just actually uh, the traditional hardware manufacturers, right? So now we're also seeing uh, companies that you no normally don't associate with hardware who are out building hardware because there's just enough scale to justify it. We're seeing a lot of new companies specializing in new kinds of hardware targeting particular, in particular, AI workloads. Now, uh, for training, uh, for data centers in particular, what this means is specialized hardware for handling large uh, models, large data sets, and training large models on large data sets. At the same time, we're entering an age where we expect billions of devices on the edge performing inference tasks, like uh, image recognition, for example. Now, if we take a look at um, 
the landscape, there are a lot of these new hardware stars emerging both in China and in the U.S. But one thing that really stuck out to us is uh, the level of focus, the number of companies are pursuing uh, new hardware companies focused on edge devices. Now, the developer community is already preparing for new hardware. Uh, for example, ML Perf and other programs out there who are thinking about how to use new hardware to accelerate experimentation and innovation. But the other part of it, too, is to think about how they can uh, together collaboratively set new benchmarks in the machine learning industry. Yeah, and so just to emphasize, when you think of hardware, you should actually also think of hard the whole suite of hardware tools. So as Roger alluded to, inference at the edge is going to be an enormous market, so not just training. Uh, but there's also more than compute, right? So there's obviously I.O. bandwidth, host bandwidth, and memory as well. But with that said, hardware is still not enough, right? So we're still living in this era where a lot of our models are data hungry, specifically uh, reinforcement learning and, and uh, deep learning. So uh, if that's the case, then the companies that are located in the big countries, so the incumbent tech companies, seem to have an advantage over the rest of us, right? Because they have uh, much, much larger data sets. The good news is there's a, a new set of tools coming out that might level the playing field for the rest of us. That's right. When it comes to data, human labelers are now leveraging a lot of these machine learning tools to uh, make their labeling process much more accurate, much more scalable, and much more efficient. And we're also seeing new tools all together in certain domains like uh, involving GANs as well as simulation engines that uh, allow the generation of realistic synthetic data, which you can then use for training machine learning models. Now, beyond generation, another important aspect of data is data sharing. Uh, the good news is a bunch of new startups now emerging to figure out new tools to enable this. And some of the te technologies that they're exploring include uh, the incorporation of cryptography, blockchain, as well as secure communications. And with these tools, uh, giving companies the ability to create new forms of data networks that allow organizations to share data securely and collaboratively. So if you're interested in uh, data markets, particularly decentralized data markets, actually Roger is giving a talk on Friday <laughs> on uh, a new set of open source that uh, his startup is building. Uh, so we have a full slate of uh, sessions for you. So we only covered, barely sc scratched the surface. Uh, we talked mostly about compute and data, but obviously this conference is uh, going to have a lot of uh, talks on modeling ethics, privacy, security, and many other topics. Um, so uh, stick around for the next two days. We have very, very strong talks all the way to the end of the conference. <laughs>